In Concept C, we're going to be focusing on heating and cooling curves and how they apply to temperature changes and phase changes. So a heating or cooling curve graphs the temperature of a substance over time while the substance is being heated or cooled at a constant rate. So these are two examples. Um, on your left, you have a heating curve as we're adding heat. And as on the right, we're this is a cooling curve as we're taking away heat as time passes. Now there's two main parts. The first part are the slopes that are combined in a heating or cooling curve. The slopes in the graph indicate a change in temperature, which then means that we have a change in the average kinetic energy of the particles. The inclines, which are the ones we find in the heating graphs, are when the temperature of a solid, liquid, or gas is increasing. So on these slopes, there's only ever one phase present, either solid or liquid or gas with their temperature increasing, which also means then that their particles are moving faster. On a decline in the cooling graphs, this is where the temperature of a solid, liquid, or gas is decreasing. And once again, on the slopes, even though we're decreasing, there's only one phase present. So either we have a solid, liquid, or a gas whose temperature is dropping, thus meaning that the particles are moving slower as heat is being taken away. Now remember, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. So the higher the temperature, the faster the particles are vibrating or moving. However, if the temperature stays the same, which is what we're going to talk about next, that means that the particles remain moving at the same speed. So what actually is occurring as time passes? So the other part of our graphs are considered the plateaus or the flat regions. The plateaus in the graph indicate no temperature change while heat is being continually added or taken away. Heat is still being added or removed, but the substance is not getting hotter or colder, meaning that it's not changing temperature. So what's happening? Instead of kinetic energy changing, the amount of potential energy is changing instead. When the potential energy changes, it allows the particles to rearrange. So they're not moving faster or slower because temperature is staying the same. However, the particles are rearranging because we have a phase change occurring. The plateaus in the heating graphs is where a substance is undergoing an endothermic phase change where they're absorbing energy. Thus, two phases are always present depending on which phase change occurs. The plateaus in the cooling graphs are where they're undergoing an exothermic phase change, meaning that they're getting rid of heat. And again, thus, two phases must be present. So in the plateaus, when we have this phase change, we have two phases that are present depending on which phase change is occurring. Now, here's some reminders about our plateaus. Um, and on a heating curve, the particles are gaining potential energy and thus overcoming IMFs, or attractive forces. Again, particles are moving further apart, overcoming those IMFs, and are rearranging. On a cooling curve, particles are losing that potential energy, and thus the IMFs are pulling the particles closer together. The particles are moving closer and rearranging. Now, this wasn't in your note package, just something I want to point out to focus on the fact that we're having changes in potential energy, the involvement of IMFs, and the fact that particles are not moving faster or slower, they're simply rearranging. One way to remember about plateaus is the three Ps, plateaus, phase change, potential energy change. All right, so let's look specifically at a heating curve. I have each line segment labeled, so section A, B has to do with this section between A and B. Now, we're starting off with a solid. So that's our only phase present on this slope, which makes sense. We do have a temperature change. It's increasing. And if we have a temperature change, then we also have a kinetic energy change. However, because kinetic energy is changing, our potential energy stays the same. Now, if we move on to the BC plateau, here we have two phases changing. We have a phase change occurring. We're going to go from a liquid or a solid to a liquid as we melt. So we have both phases present, solid and a liquid. There's no change in uh, temperature, meaning that there's no change in kinetic energy. So what's happening with all the heat that's being added? It's changing the amount of potential energy. It's increasing. And we can continue on with our next slope, which means that we have a liquid present. Basically, once we got to point C, the sample was completely liquid, and that started heating up as we go towards D, meaning that temperature and kinetic energy are both going to be increasing but potential energy stays the same. DE is going to look very similar to BC on our plateau. Here, though, we have a liquid that's going to be vaporizing. Ooh, that should say um, gas there. So we have stays the same for both temperature and kinetic energy, and the potential energy is going to increase. And then finally, for EF, we have a gas present. 
temperature and kinetic energy is going to increase, but potential energy stays the same. So you should see a trend for A, B, C, D, and E, F, those slopes, and then a trend for B, C, and D, E. One other important thing that we can use our plateaus for, for determining the melting and freezing point, and also our boiling and condensing points. The first plateau, where we have a solid and liquid, indicates our melting and freezing point. Um, our second plateau, where we have our liquid and our gas, indicate our boiling or condensing point, depending on whether we're talking about adding heat or removing it. Here's another part of a graph that I want you to be aware of. Um, we just talked about how we went from a solid, melting it to a liquid, and then boiling it to a gas. So you can see here, this part is in your note packet. B is where we start to melt. Melting is complete by C. D is where the liquid starts to boil. E is where boiling is completed, and we change into a straight gas. All right, a cooling curve, I'm going to go a little bit faster through this. It's basically just the reverse of our heating curve. On PQ slope, we just have a gas. However, temperature and kinetic energy are going to decrease because we're sloping down, and potential energy stays the same. QR is our first phase change. This is where a gas is going to be condensing into a liquid with no temperature or kinetic energy change, and potential energy is going to decrease. RS is where we're going to have our liquid. Temperature and kinetic energy are going to decrease, and potential energy stays the same. ST is our second phase change where we're going to have freezing occurring from a liquid to a solid. Temperature and kinetic energy stays the same, and potential energy decreases. And finally, for TU, we have simply a solid that's going to decrease its temperature, so that's going to go down, along with kinetic energy and potential energy stays the same. All right, and here again, we can look at and find our boiling condensing points and our melting and freezing points, looking at where those phase changes occur and using our um, y-axis. Water and ice melt and freeze at zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Um, water, liquid water and steam boil and condense at 100 degrees Celsius or 373 Kelvin. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at those specific types of graphs. Here again is just another description about how um, we're going through these different phase changes. So if kinetic energy is changing, potential energy remains constant. You should have seen that in both our heating and cooling curve. And while kinetic energy remains constant, potential energy is changing. Um, so again, that's one big difference between our plateaus and our slopes. One last thing, this isn't in your note packet that I want to point out, is that you're always going to see with different graphs that our heat of vaporization, so the time it takes for a liquid to gas or gas to liquid phase change to occur, will always have a longer plateau than the heat of fusion, which is represented by that solid to liquid or liquid to solid plateau. Um, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. You might want to jot this down, though, as a little piece of information in your note packet, and I'll give you some examples in class. All right, you are all set. Just make sure you check over your note packet, write down any questions you might have, and bring them to class.